The world in 1900. Uh, was, was older, younger, older, younger. Young, it was younger. It was younger. But they, the people from then, were older. It was a very different time. Yes. So imagine your streets. You got horse carriages. You've got bicycles. You've got hats. Uh, and also death. Death quite a lot. Death you, bicycle hats. Uh, <laughs> not death <laughs> bicycle hats. But you know, in in 1900, uh, 30 percent of all deaths occurred in children younger than five. Not good. To, to be fair, they've not contributed anything, so no loss. <laughs> well, uh, yes. Uh, the three <laughs> the three leading causes of deaths, which are not just children but older people as well, uh, pneumonia, uh, tuberculosis, uh, and diarrhea. Holy, sorry, shit. Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's... Uh, how'd you die? Well, no- I got the shits real bad. Well, that's 1900. That's 1900 for you. Yeah. In fact, a third of all deaths were those things. Pneumonia, tuberculosis, TB. Uh, so people are shitting themselves to death a fair bit back then. Um, yeah, and this 2020 is pretty similar. <laughs> oh, look, I'm not saying that 2020... <laughs> I mean, we've got it better. We've got it better. We've got... A, we've got all I'm saying is we've got different. We've got different. Different ways different. to die horribly, yeah. Before 1900, lung cancer... Lungenkrebs. What did Lungenkrebs? We will come to. Ich habe ein bisschen Lungenkrebs. Indeed. Was it, extre- ein bisschen weh. it was an extremely rare disease. Was so, it? like in 1878, the mm. Institute of Pathology in the University of Dresden in, in Germany, uh, not the University of Dresden in another country. In Adelaide. In yeah, Adelaide. Different, yeah, different, <laughs> yeah. different. Yeah. Uh, of all cancers, lung cancer was like 1%. They, they didn't Is that see, right? They didn't see it very much. And in wow. fact, um, Germany was actually kind of leading, even in the time, in lung cancer because they had a weird mountain where they were mining uranium and shit. Oh, uh, by leading you mean they had the most? They had the most out of not very many. Like, fuck all. Like, no one ever saw lung cancer and of the most was fuck all and it wow. was coming from Magic Mountain. But we'll, we'll, I'm not going to get to that. Yeah, I'm not, no, no, I won't even tell you the story of Magic Mountain. Magic Mountain is not the story. I don't want to hear it anyway. <laughs> Stick it up your bum. Good. Good. Uh, I'm bored. Magic makes me bored. But in the first few decades of the 20th century, yeah. uh, shit changed dramatically. Yeah. So in 1878, it was 1% or less of, of all cancers. But by 1918, what is that, 40 years later? 40 years ago? 40 later. Oh, yeah, yes, definitely. Yeah. Uh, lung cancer had risen to almost 10% of cancers. By 1927, it was 14% of cancers. By 1930s, it was the number two cancer death. I'm just going to say, if you test, you're going to find it, though. Because they do more testing. Exactly, oh. you do more testing. Have I just ruined the whole episode? No, no, not the whole episode. But just there most is, of it? No. Uh, just flagging, there is a little bit about if you <laughs> test. If, there, 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 is, there are some people historically who Sorry. have always said, if you test, you will find For it. For those in the future, we are broadcasting from October 2020, not salad days. Carry on, William. Uh, by the middle of the 1940s, it would become the leading cause of cancer death, and very close. In Jesus fact, Jesus Christ! Yeah, no, no, straight, straight from the, fuck all, nothing, nothing to everything to the dominant cancer death. In fact, coming close, and it depends wow. on how you define categories and stuff like that. Coming close throughout the 20th century to be the number one cause of death. So uh, of cancer death, it's it is the number one cause of cancer death from the 1940s to at least at least the end of the 20th century, yeah. uh, probably in that period, it's fighting with heart disease for the number one cause. Oh, we, lung should, cancer. we should broadcast that fight. <laughs> Pay-per-view. It's really messy. <laughs> you cancer yeah. versus heart disease. <laughs> you know Monday been... night, five ninety nine. But, uh, you know, as you can imagine, yeah. early in this phase, let's go back, casting your mind, not back to 1900, but back to the 1930s where things were taking off. People, people were starting to wonder why. They were like... Well, that's good that they were thinking about it. Indeed, indeed, see. Like, they were inquiring people back then. It's true. It's true. So, the 1930 edition of the Springer Handbook of Special Pathology, Springer being a, 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 an academic S- publisher. Springer still. Verlag, isn't it now? Springer Verlag. Is it really? I, well, it wasn't yeah. Springer Verlag, it was just Springer back then. But they turned oh, their no, guns. I have that. I have that. Good, good. You will know this next bit very yeah, well then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They turned their gaze to the problem. They said, what is what is this boom in lung cancer Hang deaths? And, uh, they said that malignant lung tumours had begun to increase at the turn of the century, about 1900, and even more so after World War I and um, possibly still on the increase. So this is in 1930. They're like, yeah. shit's still going up, maybe. We don't know because we don't know the future. Uh, they noted that cool, most... We do because it's the past. Uh, well... 
<laughs> they didn't though. Yeah, well, that's that's going to come in here. Like I can't <laughs> I, I can't tell you all of the hindsight. There's, As there's, he caresses his notes. Uh, they said that most lung tumours occurred in men. There seemed to be a steady increase in the women folk as well. Oh. Um, now, what had increased the caused such a dramatic increase in this previous obscure disease? Guess number one was what you said. Um, measuring. Yeah, measuring. Testing. So people said, look, maybe it's a statistical artifact of the fact that we've got x-rays now. We're finding this shit. Stupid x-rays. Yeah, yeah, x-rays. You know, we, we've, we've gone out there and we've looked. So we've got lung cancer. We had lung cancer all the time, but now we're finding it. Didn't matter before. <laughs> yeah, people toughed through it. Now before. we know. <laughs> now we know it's terrible. Secondly, more time in hospitals. People were spending more time in hospitals because hospitals were a bit better than they were in 1930 compared to 1900 compared to Do you know 1860. also, I know you're not supposed to like hospital, but whenever I'm in hospital... The one, my first and most overwhelming feeling is... Uh, what, you're safe now? I don't have to do anything. No, no, you legit, legitimately don't have to answer The moment you're in hospital, you don't have to do anything. If you answer an email in hospital... You're you a are, fucking idiot. You are broken and wrong and you're damaging the system. Like, yep, yep, you, yep. Best excuse ever not to do anything. I am in hospital. It's true. When I had a long stint in hospital seven years ago, other than being frightened for my life, Was details... That seven years ago? Seven, yeah. 2013. Holy shit. I know. One of them overwhelming That's when Van Halen nearly killed you. No, no, it's that's then they kept me alive. Oh, you're so nice and positive. That is a different podcast. It's called The Forge. Hang on. Yeah. Back no, to you, Will. That's well, I thought you were gonna finish the story. Oh that's all I've got. No, oh I'm saving God. that. I'm right, saving so, that for another good day no, studios so, so, podcast. Okay, so some people some people said, okay, it's because we're testing more. Other people said, fuck off, mate. Like the stats are reliable. <laughs> the scientist. <laughs> they're so vulgar. <laughs> Well, they, they did. They said Lungenkrebs, Lungenkrebs. I love that. Uh, it's real and it's accelerating. Something is going on here. So the mm. handbook said, okay, there's got to be a couple of things that could be caused. It could be. It could be. Now, I could play guess here with you and this might be fun. But if, I, you, know, if you want to, I'll have a crack. Uh, yeah, well, do you want to guess a couple of the things that they might have put in as the things that caused... Uh, of the Lungenkrebs? Lungenkrebs, lung cancer. Yeah. What well, might it was be? Was that like mining? Uh, in there, yes. Uh, Fresh air, too much pollution, wind because the car. Not too much wind. No one was saying too much fresh air. No, <laughs> no one, no one was saying too much fresh air. Yes, the car. So increase in automobile traffic. So legitimately, yeah, yeah. Uh, cars had boomed in that mm -hmm. twenty years. There was, right. a, there was one a thing we know for sure. It is not. Not well, we'll cigarettes. Well, we'll come to it that. It is not. We'll come to that. They didn't actually say that. They, so, so they had uh, increased air pollution by gases and dust caused by industry. So yeah, industry yeah, has yeah. certainly boomed in that sort of time. Yeah. Asphalt of roads. Uh, asphalt. Uh, asphalt, yes. Uh, increase in automobile traffic. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Siege. Exposure to gas in World War I. Uh, people were saying, you know, ah. it's all of the all of the chemical gases. I, I get exposed to gas right now. The influenza, yeah, stop being a scientist. The influenza <laughs> pandemic of 1918. Um, working with what? Yeah, no, wait, wait. There's two the more Spanish there's, flu. There's two yeah. more uh, working with benzene or gasoline. So people were worried about that. There, people. Oh using yeah, petrol two, two of the most health giving substances on earth. Or potentially uh, racial mixing. Uh, oh, f that's that's for sure. <laughs> what a stretch. <laughs> No, for sure. You appear to be with a woman of a different colour. Do you have lung cancer? <laughs> I, I, I don't know what level of racial mixing they were accusing here. I had intercourse with a woman from China the other day, and, and now I'm coughing. Lung cancer. Lung cancer. Fuck uh, me, really. Ra racial interaction. Indeed. Indeed. It was thrown out there as a possible reason for I saw an African the other day, and now my lungs hurt. <laughs> Fuck me. Oh, God. Well, look, that, that might be a theme. That might be a theme. Fancy might, be, might have a theme Fancy for where we're going here. So, yeah, they had a bunch of theories. And, look, um, they were most of those were poo-pooed. Most of those were poo-pooed because, at the same time, uh, lung cancer rates were increasing in countries that didn't have so many cars or had less industry or had less roads or had less racial mixing even. <laughs> <laughs> Roads, racial mixing, you know, potato, po tomato. In their defence, the Springer Handbook, in one or two sentences, they said, uh, maybe there's this other thing. Maybe it's, 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 the, the people been having more cigarettes. There's, it's it just... Yeah, yeah, just, but, but with foreigners. Uh, maybe. But, you know, for the moment, there seems to be, there seems to be positive findings. Now, they said this, <laughs> but uh, there were some other people, some other people who had some uh, interesting ideas here. Mm. 
Welcome Thank you. to the Wholesome Show, the science podcast that is very much in favour of racial mixing, uh, yes. but not of the Lungenkrebs. I agree, I agree, we are. Oh, there's something else I'm supposed to say? No, do what you like. The Wholesome Show is tops. The Wholesome Show is me, Will Grant, him... Racially pure Roderick Griffin Lambert. <laughs> There's no such thing. And we are joined today by CJ Josh. Thank you so much for Professor being here. Professor of all things. The Wholesome Show is a production of Good A Studios. Check them out. They've got so many awesome podcasts, including this one. And another one. And another one. <laughs> and and nearly a third. And yeah. nearly a third. And is also brought to you by the Australian National Centre for the Public Awareness of Racism. Of science. 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 I get confused. They seem so similar. There are times when I look at science and I look at racism and I think, I don't see the difference. There are other times when I do see differences. Oh, no, no, often also different. I'm not saying it's one or the other. There are nuances. Yeah, well, well look, we might it's be... It's a continuum. We may be doing a story where there's a little bit of, of not difference. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, no, yeah. Not My apologies <laughs> for accidental foreshadowing, but... No, you didn't, but. you didn't, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't. Yeah. Don't worry, don't worry, man. It's all right, it's all right. It's I got no worries. I'm an academic. There's nothing to worry just about. To, just to steal the story here. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, so there was those one, two, one or two sentences in the Springer Handbook where they said maybe cigarettes or something. I'll just, I'll just tell you a little bit of... Uh, just to jump forward to the conclusion. Yeah. It's fucking cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> like it's... it's what? It's, it's fucking cigarettes. S- slow down. What is? Lungenkrebs. Lung also, cancer. German disorder. <laughs> Lung cancer. Lung cancer. I'm saying it in German because... Um, it's well, cooler. I'm saying it in, not because... It, yes, because it's cooler and also because of other. Also... Uh, also because of our enormous German listenership. Indeed, indeed. So, cigarettes. Let's. Uh, they, people smoked for a long time. People have smoked since, like, forever. Do you uh, know why? Because uh, it's nice. It is cool as fuck. Like, well, I still wish I smoked because it just made me feel awesome and people agreed. <laughs> Wasn't it Walter Raleigh? I do like the idea yes. that... Uh, no, he, ate, potatoes. he ate the tobacco. He ate the... He, ate the yeah, he smoked potatoes and ate he tobacco. He smoked potatoes and yeah. ate tobacco, yeah. Yeah. If Rowan Atkinson has taught me anything. <laughs> yes, we learnt everything from Black Adam. People yes. have been... Humans, humans have been smoking stuff forever. Yes. But uh, not nearly so much as they might have done in the 20th century. Like something actually uh, actually did change. Yeah. So people would Was be, it Hitler? Uh, he's in here. Uh, just a forewarning That's here. all I'm going to say. As, as I'll say when I come to my backup wholesome show topics, <laughs> Hitler's going to be involved. Uh, no, Hitler's nine-tenths of all my episodes too. <laughs> <laughs> People, people, people did smoke, uh, but mostly people are smoking by pipes, or they're smoking very much in ceremonies, or they're smoking rarely. Uh, yeah, still a weird thing though to kind of go. Let's set this thing on fire and, and put it in it. our mouth. Yeah, but you know, that. you know what? Who, yeah. who doesn't do it? Freaking animals! Stupid, stupid animals! They can't do it. We are so much better than them, except for that chimpanzee. There was there was footage the other yes. day. Oh, yes, a chimpanzee in a zoo just sucking it, it down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sucking Having a it dart. down. <laughs> like, but literally, like they light it and then. It's down to the filter in one drag, gone. Cigarettes are almost a 20th century phenomenon. Like, like yeah, that's the, true. It's the whole thing yeah, is yeah. pretty much a whole 20th century thing. Uh, go to woe. Uh, so originally, before that, cigarettes existed, but they were hand rolled. I assume on maidens' legs or something like yes. that. That was Cuban cigars, I believe. But but no, that's the, nuns. But the, the, but hand rolling is expensive, so you can roll your own. Or you can get the maidens at the factory to roll them, but that's not a very uh, cheap... They're they're cheaper maidens. Now, I love this. So in 1876, uh, the cigarette manufacturer Allen & Ginter... uh, Oh, I love theirs. I I know. There's like... I haven't heard of them very much. No, me neither. But but we have plain packaging now, so I don't know where Allen Allen & Ginter Uh, fits in that. They offered a prize. They said, all right, we want to speed this up a little bit. Can you make more women's thighs or more hands-on thighs or some sort of device that will help us to, to roll up more cigarettes yes. in this time. Yes. And so a guy named James Albert Bonsack uh, made a machine. Bumsack? Bonsack. Bon. Good, so good sack. Yeah, bon, yeah, good sack. Good sack. What is my sack? It is bon. Très bon. He made a machine that could make cigarettes at 7,000 cigarettes an hour. And the original... Oh, oh, holy hell. Yeah, well, no, exactly. Exactly. That's, that's, what, a, lot, that's a lot from, you know, none to 7,000 an well, hour. Alan to be Gil- fair, I was at a party in 1991 and there was a lot of pot there and they said, we need to roll a bunch of joints because it's going to keep the party going. And I reckon I got to about 
four thousand an hour. <laughs> whoa, whoa, okay, okay. You've got my the little fingers were a blur, <laughs> but it wasn't tobacco. I'm not a monster. Well, there's no. a bit of tobacco. But yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Well, uh, the, your reaction is exactly what Alan and Ginter had. That's they, a shitload of dogs. No, they, they said that's too fucking many. Like, they, stop it, stop it. We don't want this machine. You have gone way beyond our bounds. We were hoping for a little bit of an increase. Why did they not want that? Did they not make money out of it? No, they said it was too fast. They said that you will ruin our you and our ruin our, um, our our margins here if we can if we can make cigarettes that fast. Uh, that would ruin everything. We don't want it. So Absolutely. they weren't very smart. This is why we haven't heard of them again. Yeah, they don't understand <laughs> economics. No, one. They don't get it. One hundred percent. So so they literally offered this prize, and they said it was too fast. The the result from uh from Bonsac, and it would produce more cigarettes than the market could possibly even want. So, so this is like like in the Olympics, like you're saying, Bolt, you ran the one hundred meters in two seconds. It's too fast, mate. It's too, too fast. We can't work with it that. Does, it doesn't count. Could so, you dial it back a so little? So did you know that the 100-meter race is actually 100 meters between like 9 seconds and 20 seconds? Yeah. Like that's, yeah, it's, in, yeah. it's in there. It's For not, fuck's sake, mate. We don't know how to handle this. So they, they literally there said- There wouldn't be a big enough market. Was that the line? Yeah, that's it. That's it. They thought they thought we could handle a little bit more. We wanted we wanted. They didn't understand here, what tobacco more. does. And you've changed it. They, they didn't. They didn't understand- yeah, the addiction okay. that is tobacco. Yeah. So a guy named James Buchanan Duke, who was known as Buck, and that's that's an intensely Buck. Uh, Bucky Barnes, but uh, Buck Duke. Buck Duke. It's, it's also two Ks. Like it's an unusual kind of Buck, Buck Duke. Duke. Buck Duke. Yeah, it it's, sounds like a body reaction to a or, toxin. Or why don't you just go with the nickname Duke? Yeah. Yeah, Duke's just, pretty cool. Duke's all right. D- don't don't worry about needing an extra nickname. Call me Buck. To. Why? You're called Duke already, man. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> that's just greedy. <laughs> it's getting a bit. Yeah, it's greedy. I'm getting a bit grabby. So, yeah. that, so this is James Buchanan Duke. He had no he had no qualms. He's like, I I don't mind going faster. So yeah. he bu- he bought two of um Bonsac's machines, and he went on to found one of those companies that you might have heard of. So the American Tobacco Company. So in 1889, he was the president of the new American Tobacco Company. Oh, the wealth. And uh, I'll, I'll just show you this chart here. I'll show, show you, me a chart, I'll show Will. You, you know, this is, this is the number of cigarettes produced, uh, smoked by an average, uh, well, smoked per capita per person in uh, America. Um, and we start with pretty much friggin' nowhere, but things started to boom. So what? What's the time scale on the x-axis? What's the That's, years? So we're starting down at nineteen hundred, yep. and going up to year two thousand. And so we're we're you know we're smoking down on we're starting down at here at maybe a uh, couple. Fuck all. F- fuck all. We're st- we're starting in the hundreds per year or less than that. Maybe maybe fifty cigarettes. This per is for year. the company or per person. Total total. So we're starting at fifty. We're starting at no cigarettes per year, and yep. things took off. Things took off. We're getting to 50. Uh, by 1920s, uh, average Americans are smoking 1,000 cigarettes per year. Wow. Eventually, eventually, later on in this story, they'll get to 5,000 cigarettes per year on average. So 5,000 cigarettes, you, Damn. Know, you know how many days there are. I'll just Looking show you. You know how many days there are in a year. Yeah, 190. Uh, yes, exactly. Ish, ish. So y- if you divide that by 5,000 or something like that, there's You get a million. We're scaling up quickly. We're going, we're, Fuck but we're going, but but the thing is, we're going from pretty much zero. Like yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. the yeah. number of cigarettes people are smoking, it's like a party trick. Like it's yeah, like yeah. I'm going yeah. to a cool party, I'm going to smoke a cigarette. Like it's it's a rare weird yeah. thing where people are showing off. What are you doing? Versus in the 1950s, uh, up to actually the 1970s something, people are smoking a lot all the time. And yeah. It's a huge ramp up. Yeah. So what, what made this happen? So firstly, it was, it was um, Buck Duke uh, and the American Te- Tobacco Company. Um, What's the nickname again? Champ. Uh, Buck Duke Champ, yes. Uh, they sped up making cigarettes faster. World yeah. War I, uh, they, start, uh, they start giving out cigarettes to all the troops. Yep. Yeah. It, it yep. Helps they were in the packs that went out with the biscuits yep. and yep. The yep. things. Bull- bullets yep. and durries. Um, oh, and, and what survival biscuits. Mm. And the cheese that makes you never shit again. Shooting's for losers. Sayos. That's where Sayos were first came from. Salvation Army officers. Mm-hmm. Made the pickies. No, survival biscuits, you would have, you would have eaten those. I have. Where you basically, they get them in the Australian Army, therefore probably somewhere else first. You eat a small biscuit, you drink some water, and you feel like you've eaten nine roast dinners. What? This is this is, this is is from Roald Dahl, the cho- Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Same thing, same yeah, thing, except, um, except military. Uh, I don't believe it exists. 
Uh, so yeah, World War One boomed um, yeah. cigarettes. So people had them in the trenches, yeah. and then everyone at home seemed to smoke. It, boomed in smoking at the same time to relieve stress. I, don't I was going to say it's, it's a good time to sort of like take up a habit. Really, well, I yeah, guess. Yeah, yeah. I guess yeah. if your husband's out, you're like, okay, now. Well, yeah, and also if it, it was. As an you excuse. were you are probably going to go on to say how they were marketed as well. I won't. I won't. I'm not well, going into that. It's also solidarity with the troops, you know. The, my boyfriend smokes Luckies. I smoke Luckies. Oh, that's World War Two, really. But yes, yeah. it's. I don't know. I don't know what the brands are in World War One. They're they're more like the what are they? Bully. Like, like <laughs> camel. Bully cigarettes. Yeah, 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 oh, maybe. camel. God, camels are so seductive. Mm. Oh, especially with the the murdering that little girl in the um, Paris Dakar race. Yeah, yeah, hit with the um, yeah, she's gotten the way. She's a spectator, yeah. right? Oh yeah. my god, she's gotten the way. It yes. was a very she got impressive in the way. <laughs> and got a bit killed. Yeah, I, I, but it was deliberate. Is the whole point? But that's a different story. Good lord, that's, that's, another, that's another episode. <laughs> that's a good lord. Story. That's a different story. Yeah. Uh, so smokers, uh, soldiers are smoking, uh, civilians at home are smoking. Everyone starts smoking. Um, mm. Supposedly, John John J. Blackjack Pershing. Um, Oh, hell yeah, Blackjack. Again, it's a good nickname. Um, oh. Reportedly said, you ask me what is needed to win this war, I answer tobacco as much as bullets. And I'm not sure how. Um, well, tobacco can cause a lot of damage at high velocity. Everyone knows that. <laughs> I, I just I just don't know what bit of tobacco is going to is gonna actually well, win the war. The, the tough bits, the hard bits. But... I want to tell I want to tell a story here about not all of not all of tobacco and not all of lung cancer because there is a there is a long story here to tell. Lung and crypts. Uh, indeed, indeed, there is a long story to tell. But I want to tell the story mm. of the first efforts against lung cancer. Oh. Um, so let's go back to the Springer Handbook of Special Pathology. What was mm. causing the rise of lung cancer? Mm. And so what did they said? Uh, oh, they said um, asphalt and uh, mining, mining, and air pollution, air pollution, immoral thoughts, uh, um, racism. Uh, not quite racism. Was uh, it not? Oh, mixed races. Yeah. Yes, yes. The, oh, other, the oh, other side of oh, racism. I know what's next. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> it was some German scientists who first started to uh, see the link between smoking and lung cancer. Yes. So in 1929, it seems to have been too late to get into the actual handbook. Um, it must have happened. The paper, Springer Verlag handbook. Yeah. The, the Springer Handbook of Special Pathology. The German physician Fritz Linkit, Linkint, uh, published a paper in which he showed that lung cancer patients were kind of particularly kind of kind of likely to be smokers. So you got lung cancer uh, patients. Coincidence. And it, we, uh, many people said yes. Of course it's, so. it's a coincidence. Of course it's a coincidence. But he said that um, tobacco use was the best way to explain the fact that lung cancer struck men four or five times more often than women, mm -hmm. since women at that time at smoked At that time they less. didn't smoke much. Yeah. And also in countries where women did smoke, the sex difference was smaller. So he's like, yeah, look at you Americans, you're smoking. He's so, man's disease. Uh, what do you do? I think we've blended all of the accents in that last yeah, sentence. I but. think so. Uh, building on this, Adam Sirek in 1932, he was at the University of Krakow, not quite Germany. but it Poland, would, close enough. It would be soon. Uh, <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Hang on a minute. That looks a lot like Germany. We'll take it. Argued uh, similarly that it was hard to f hard to reconcile a non-tobacco uh, position with the uh, mortality patterns he was he was seeing in rural Poland. He was saying that um, uh, if you say it's not tobacco, you're wrong. Well, he was saying all the lung cancer deaths I'm seeing uh, were from uh, the areas where there seems to be a fair bit of the cigarette smoking. A hint related, and, and, and not a lot of the polluting industries. Um, so he said, you know, uh, there seems to be some sort of parallel there. What kind of? Can I just ask? What kind of tobacco are we talking about smoking at this stage? Is the this sort of like ones. do the rollies, you roll your own, or the manufactured, or this the chop chop, or the <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know? Let's, like. let's go with the manufactured here. Okay. I, I am not going to, but probably filterless. Probably that, that there wouldn't point. have been a filter. Probably filters yeah. came in. I think fairly no, late. No, but in I d I'm not going to do the story of filters. But I think filters actually caused more of a problem, didn't they? In the in the end, in the long run, I think they did because you got to suck harder. Mm. But right, you do. I, I don't know. I and don't you know, know what happens when you suck harder? You look cooler. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, a couple of years later, Franz Muller in, in Germany, he published, uh, so this is in uh, what, uh, the late 1930s, he published a, a case control study showing the extraordinary rise in tobacco was uh, tobacco use mm. was the single most important cause of the rising incidence of lung cancer. Now, so there's a there's a good background there, but but uh, something else happened in Germany in the 1930s. 
that is worth <laughs> as we mop up a giant spill. No. There's, there's been a small spill. When you invite guests in, they pour beer on no, the no, table. No, 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 no. It's a good, a good analogy for what tobacco. Else, what else happened in Germany in yes. the 1930s? Yes. Nazis. Nazis. Nazis came to power. So what were they? Uh, so they're bad guys. Oh. Uh, oh no! It's, I've seen Indiana Jones. I see what you're saying. Yeah. So the um, the Nazi the Nazis came to power in 19, January 1933, and as it's such a mopping up in the, uh, exercise going. <laughs> if there's one place beer belongs, it's on the table. For those of you not watching the video, someone may have spilled the beer on everything. Well, it was just a little tiny bit. Yeah, tiny little beer on everything. No, uh, it's enough. It's all right. So, more to the point, Nazis. Back to the Nazis. Nazis. Uh, now, they, they they chopped up a lot of science in Germany at the time. Chopped oh. it up. Uh, well, okay. No, I didn't no, mean No, to it, be no. fair, they did a lot of science, and some of it wasn't garbage. Yes. 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 I'm going to yes. say yes. Yes. Surprisingly less wasn't then garbage. A, a lot, a lot was, is what you were saying. No, a lot was, a lot was, but there, there was some. What? Uh, well, look, here's the first thing. So, so they, the first thing that the Germans did, they, you know, we've heard this story many times before. They got rid of any sciences that had strong uh, presence of the, um, people, folks of certain persuasions. Uh, well, or m- not quite a persuasion, but of ethnicity, like that. No, that's a choice. <laughs> <laughs> Not, not at the time. Not at the time. <laughs> I think I may have killed him. I, You're getting close. Psychoanalysis. They got rid of that. Like, let's get a get yeah, rid of because well, uh, he's Austrian. For, yeah, indeed. Well, that was part of Germany at the time. Uh, they got rid of a lot of physics. Not, yep. not loved yep. by the Germans. No. So, no. Um, a lot of their leading lights were Jewish, and so off they went. But there were other sciences that did fairly well at the time. Yeah. Uh, and you know, cancer research was actually one of those ones that actually did pretty well at the time. Isn't that um, weird? Uh, it's it's weird, but it's not. Is it because it wasn't done by Jewish people? It wasn't done by Jewish people. Boom. And also there's something else that, that tickled the fancy of the Nazis. Is at it the a time. health thing? It's a, oh, my God. They had a, such a boner for – and I'm so glad that you are here for this, Siege, because yeah. there's, there's an element to this – As a Nazi yourself. Despite, no, despite yeah. the no, beer spilling. No, 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 no. Uh, there's an element to this that, that parallels with something that's going on right now that it's just anyway. – Okay, go ahead. So, as we know, Nazis had a boner for weird stuff. Yes. They were all over um, you know, anything anything making the body as pure as you can get. Uh, oh, keep talking. You might guess the, the modern parallel in a second. Um, some people have called this like a homeopathic paranoia. I'm hearing high colonic. Uh, <laughs> yeah, all the way. All, uh, high, yeah, colonic all the way to no, the top. No, seriously, dude, the tube could go in further. That's what I always say to my doctor. <laughs> Clean me higher, clean yeah. me higher. Yeah. yeah, well, no, no, it's a paranoia you know, yeah. about yeah. everyone out there, but also everyone in here, that small, powerful agents were um, undermining the German people. Um, and by, like, to so say people who aren't watching, what Will means by small, powerful, he means like microscopic. They meant both. They meant both. They they literally they in the same humans sentence, and humans and microbes and, and, and germs. microbes and humans and germs they they were they were deeply worried about things that would make you your body not pure yeah. and they thought that the German body uh, in total um, could be made impure by anything uh, certain humans and they were you know they they had a list uh, but also the human the human German body uh, could be made <laughs> impure by certain and and, and look like the, the, there's a nice list of things that they d- they would do so you know we 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 all know that it comes encouraging the the German types to breed more disencouraging the in, nons yeah dis- disencouraging being a word that encompasses many things yeah um, so it's basically are you a pure white German no would you do us a favor. And and don't have children. Don't have children. Also, it would really help us if you could just die. Did they? Yes. Yes. If you died a bit, that would really help us out. So pure white German, have yeah. a lot of kids and yeah. and be really healthy. Yeah. Uh, not then, then. Would you mind? So they yeah they did they did a whole lot of that and this is not could a, you go to bed and not get up the, that would the, be that would be excellent for the, us this is this is not yeah. a story all of that but no but, no it's not but but they they did they did at this time the Nazis became preoccupied 
with what we would now call all of the superfoods. Uh, I do like the phrase, the Nazis were preoccupied, because it's not untrue. Well, what else did they do? They they were... No, it's just a great line. What, what, how would you describe the Nazis? Well, they were quite preoccupied. <laughs> what with? Well, a few things. A few things. Well, yeah. many, many... Including would, superfoods. Many would say that's why they lost the war. Too preoccupied? Yeah, they were. They were. They that's were d- not they untrue. Were, they were doing other stuff while not quite fighting the war. Um, they many, they spent many. a lot of time on infrastructure. Yeah, too many, uh, and too many fronts. Not quite that. Not quite <laughs> that. Problem, yes. Yeah, yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Uh, but anyway, so so this is where, and this is why I, I raised it with you. There was there was a Nazi slogan: "Leave our food as natural as possible." Yeah, was a slogan. I know where this is going. It was a slogan <laughs> that was coined in 1942 by the Nazi physician Werner Kollath. But when I was t- doing that. You know how you know how Google does um, like ads. Oh, you must be looking for yeah. Yeah, you must be looking for this or something. Like, and then and then up pops Pete Evans. Pete Evans. <laughs> Pete Evans little mug. I, I just love that. Uh, look, so that, you type Nazi food and you get Pete Evans. Not quite. Not quite. I mean, this was when I was I was not just looking at the over to you. I was just looking at the article that said leave our food as natural as possible. It's coming to the wholesome show. Yes, Siege. Do yes, us, it is. Do, do my episode on Pete Evans and my obsession on Instagram. And, and, and the other one on. <laughs> oh no, that's periods. Oh well, it's no point doing it now. You've blown it. <laughs> but before we get back to tobacco, what what things did the Nazis target? Some of them are one hundred percent legitimate. Um, in fact, we'll spend our time on something that's pretty legitimate. But I had to, <laughs> I, had to I had to draw out some of the ones that were less so. Okay, so first of all, food dyes. They hated food dyes. They were just, that's That's fucked. a fair cop. Um, and I don't know how bad food dyes were at the time, like to make your food coloured. Yeah, and no, I understand. They, I don't know how bad, I think they thought they were carcinogenic. Um, Some may have been. Uh, and they might well have been. Because the next thing that they didn't like is mercury dental fillings. And Yeah, I, so mercury. It's not one of your basic food groups. I also don't know how it's going to work as a filling. Because it's a liquid. Because it's a liquid. Yeah, it's, I was going to say it's thing in it. It's, it's like it's basically an amalgam of I think mercury and and chewing gum. Let's not fuck around. Lead. All right. So they didn't like that. Which so here's what you're going to do. You got to, you got tooth decay. I'm going to take some lead and some mercury, and I'm going to fix your tooth. It's like I, I, I don't want it fixed. <laughs> I'd rather you pulled it out or left it alone. <laughs> re- oh yeah, but the, the, they seem like pretty easy metals to work with. To be fair, silver as well came in a lot. That's not so bad. I, I haven't eaten much, but but yes. Yeah, so mercury did feature in fillings. Okay, so they were against mercury dental fillings. They were also food dyes. They were against yeah. mental de- uh, mercury dental fillings. Uh, they really didn't like asbestos. Why? It's Shit bad. doesn't burn, man. No, they didn't like it. They didn't like it. But but here's the one. Here's the one I really like. Uh, they hated white bread. Um, <laughs> and and more than that, I would have thought they'd hate brown bread. But anyway, just check. No, 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 no. This this is mm. weird. You know, this is the one time they didn't like the whites. Uh, weird. That um, they said that white bread was actually a Jewish. Uh, Oh, make it Jewish. Jewish. Yeah, no, they, they said it was a Jewish plot. Um, so this this is a, a recorded broadcast from Nazi Radio. I don't know what channel. It's just called Nazi Radio. Mm. It's recorded by the Jewish Telegraphic Agency. Uh. The, the baking of white bread, the Nazi broadcaster explained, was promoted by Jews both for speculative reasons and also for the purpose of undermining the health of the German people. What? Before the Jews settled in Germany, the people generally ate whole wheat bread. For the last century, however, the Jews pushing themselves in between the producer and the consumer oh. fostered the production of dead flour, which was deprived of nutritional value. So, yeah. So, okay, the, we need to disentangle. White bread is Jewish. Yeah, and that's the disentanglement that I think we need. White, what is it, dead flour? Dead flour. Sure. Yeah. I mean, like sugary, crappy, denuded, bleached white flour, not great. Is it Jewish? Uh, I don't know enough about Jewish religions, but no, I don't know enough about it. But I mean, it's, it, there is some components of food that you, you shouldn't, be, you know, that, that yeah, yeah. Met, don't that put don't put chicken's blood in your yogurt, and I have no problem with that. I've <laughs> no, got me no too, problem me with too. that. Fine, sounds fine. I mean, I used to, but then I learned. But and I do no. love I do love that that white bread became a a, a thing that Churchill hey, Churchill lost Churchill it. no Churchill lost his election at the end of World War Two on white bread. There was a whole thing about you know. Uh, bah. Well, it got got made with like plaster of Paris in it. And oh, I, I don't know that, but um, oh, Clement yeah, Attlee said you, you can yeah, yeah. you can yeah. have white bread again, and Churchill's like, no, we must suffer through this. 
And so uh, the, the, there was there was it a, became symbolic. Like the politics of white bread were really quite complicated back then. Maybe we should do a whole story. Actually, on white there's bread. a there's a lot to do with white bread. Yeah, like a, probably a whole a, like sto- uh, how they had because they couldn't get hold of the wheat, and yeah. so they used to like. But I just love the, I love yeah, that yeah, the, yeah. Na- yeah. the Nazis are going. Oh, okay, it's a Jewish invention. It's like seriously, wow. calm so, down. But, but Jesus, I, one thing to pick. No, I can, I can clarify <laughs> Nazi thinking though. Okay, we've done a bunch of stuff either demonstrably scientific or not, and we've worked out these are good and these are bad. So the bad ones, what's wrong with them? Yeah, probably Jewish. Mm, mm, mm. Related to, doesn't matter, they're bad, no, therefore they must be Jewish. It's almost like that's how the Nazis thought. I don't know what you're talking about now. Uh, now you're just being racist. So what have we got? we got uh, white bread, um, eat as much healthy meat and fish, no mercury fillings, no, t- no asbestos, mm. and also no smoking. The Nazis, oh. they... Uh, so, Karl Astor was born on the 26th of February, 1898, mm-hmm. in Schweinfurt. Uh, he finished Schweinfurt? Schweinfurt. Pig town. Uh, indeed. Pig, uh, pig castle, pig city, pig... Foot? Foot? Like Frankfurt? Town. Like, it's not yeah, it's Berg, but like, yeah, like town-ish. Yeah, yeah. Ish. Uh, he fin- As the German expert in the podcast. Uh, of course, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Uh, he finished his gymnasium, which means... High school. Oh. Uh, he fought in oh, I'm war. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry for knowing something. I know. Uh, he fought and it's gymnasium. Gymnasium. In, and then he went and fought in World War I, uh, yep. 1917 and 1918. Uh, he was early on as a Nazi. Yeah. He was part of the early Cup Push and the Beer Hall Push, uh, a member of the Free Corps Oberland, and he, w- he, won, he won the special Nazi badge oh. of the first 100,000 people, the Golden Nazi Badge of Honor or the Nazi Golden Badge of Honor. Uh, so he was right there early on. He was first one hundred thousand. I yeah, should have got that for Twitter. You should. You're the first one hundred thousand Twitter Nazis. 000. I don't. I mean, I'm sure you could get it for the first one hundred thousand in Facebook. That is is a, a Nazi badge. Yeah, probably. Twitter's not as bad as that. No, no, no. But I'm just saying there should have been a badge for that. You yeah. should do it. Write to them now. And say, <laughs> write to them now and say the Nazis let's got a badge. Let's make one. Uh, we'll go out the back after this and we'll forge some shit. So <laughs> I think it's actually it was actually a big. So ten million people eventually joined the party. Okay, so he was early. He was yeah. he was early yeah. on. He was the yeah. first one percenter of people that that loved the idea of it. Um, uh, he went on to become um, he went to become a sports teacher for a while. He was oh, that would have been my guess. Yeah, but phys ed, phys ed in the yeah, Nazi that regime, was, they, they, they would have been very serious. You about have it. very, very well honed glutes, mm. Heinrich. Uh, um, but then he went on to study medicine. Uh, so in 1926, he was a sports teacher for a few years, and then he went to University of Wurzburg and and got a got a PhD to st- uh, to teach medicine. Wurzburg. Um, at the same time, yeah, I don't know if it's Wurzburg. Wurzburg's fine. Yeah, that'll fine. Wurzburg. No, Wurzburg. Wurzburg. Uh, of course, being in the first 100,000, he was strongly anti-Semitic. Yep. Loved a bit of the euthanasia. Yep. Um, and, uh, you know, also strongly anti-tobacco. Not for any uh. reason at the time. It, he just thought, you know, this is um, – it's it's corrupting the German youth. Killing you know? the kids, yep. yeah. It's yep. Ki- so um, after 1930, he actually – he became a lecturer um, at the University of Jena and eventually he became the president when uh, things got easier for him, being, mm. being such a, a strong Nazi. Mm. Uh, so he'd be, he'd be the vice chancellor. But I like the story. He would go around campus and he would snatch cigarettes from the mouths of students. I wish um, our vice chancellor would do that because that would be funny. <laughs> <laughs> but I just we d- can't smoke on campus. Yeah, they're, they're little enclaves. Enclaves, are they? Well, the it's, the it's, best thing about them is they put them at major kind of arterial intersections for the roads. And also at um, air conditioning inlets. Yeah, well, duh. <laughs> Spread the love. Well, interestingly, uh, maybe maybe our friend Carl Astell might have been the first university at the University of Jena, snatching cigarettes from the mouths of, of his students. He, uh, his he white non jewish students, just checking. Uh, I don't think he, we should assume. Let's assume. Let's assume that he had Jewish students um, in the first part of his by tenure. accident. Uh, in the first part of his first, tenure. stop smoking. Second, show me your penis. For circumcision, not because he was gay, because that's un Nazi. Or it's other. totally or, Nazi. Or other. Or other. No, there's no other. I don't know how you work with him. No, I don't. I, I don't know either. I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, I've spilled Some, beer. And I sometimes have... sometimes he says things and you just go, what am I going to work with that? But like, yeah, there's like, nowhere to go with that. Like, like <laughs> you yeah. said this thing. and you I drop, know where a dead and, albatross and, is. And I'm thinking all of those ways of it. It's just, it's just 
just not necessary. Yeah, no, no, you've got a hard life. Here I okay. am trying to help out, and this is the abuse I get. Uh, he became the president. He became the vice chancellor, the boss of the university, mm. and as also a high-ranking SS officer because he's kept synonymous. His, yeah, kept yeah. his Nazi party allegiance all the way yep. through. And then in 1941, he was given a hundred thousand dollar grant, hundred thousand Reichsmark grant, not dollars. Obviously. Oh, so that's about eight cents. Yep. I have no idea what a Reichsmark counts for. Oh, it's a fuckload. Uh, yes, then, yeah. then a then fuckload. A fuckload. Now yeah. a little less. But directly from Hitler's Reichs Chancellor uh, to Ooh. found the Institute for the Struggle Against Tobacco Hazards. Struggle was in the title. There was a lot of struggle, though. But it's interesting to put it in the title. I, I don't think struggle's used enough in the title of institutes anymore. I think Hitler was pretty keen on the word struggle. Maybe, struggle. maybe we should be the centre for the struggle against the un- the non-understanding. Against the non-public awareness the, of science. The non- non-awareness of science. I'm okay with that. Struggle should be in more names. I, I think the word, it would have been Kampf. Like it would have yeah. been the, the Kampf of Mind science Kampf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or non Kampf. In its defense, there were two titles. And uh, it okay. was more commonly known against the struggle against tobacco hazards. <laughs> and that was more fun. It had a more bureaucratic title as well. But it was actually known as that. <laughs> Just don't, don't fucking ask me. The actual like, title, no SIGs. Uh, yeah, look, they, they, they were both science and propagandist. And this is, this is the interesting line. So, yep, sure. so they, they did a bit of both. So, so some yep. of the early propaganda. So they're distributing copies of um, Hans F. K. Gunther's uh, pamphlet called uh, Trinken, Rauschen, Gatwollen. Drinking, smoking, something to do with your stomach and... Uh, maybe I pronounced that wrong. You got right, right? Uh, Trinken. Rauchen is smoking, drinking is... Trinken, Rauchen, yeah. so it's drinking, smoking, and spousal choice. So, gutten, oh. gutten So, fucking. Drinking, spousal. Drinking, smoking, and fucking. <laughs> and, and, and this supposedly was saying things bad against smoking. So, I don't know, drinking, smoking, fucking sounds all right. So... Uh, Here's my pamphlet, Drinking, Smoking, and Fucking. Pro or con? <laughs> and also um, some copies of Lincoln, who we heard from before. Um, Tabak und Organismus. Uh, and and the journal the journal uh, Reiner Lufter, which is pure air, pure air, yeah, pure air, yeah. which which uh, as you can guess, pure mm-hmm. pure air published in the the Nazi era, mm-hmm. they yeah, non Jewish air. Well, they yeah they they threw in but whole, also no smoking, no smoking, also mm. a whole bunch of racism. They managed to yeah. combine it quite quite strongly. Let, let's let's summarize: white air. Yeah, they Except have, unless the white is smoke. Yeah, they meant white but clear. Yeah, clear, clear air. Clear, clear air is better. Yeah, you're clear right, you're clear right, air right. and white air. Clear mm. is clear is yeah. white. I yeah. think in, in yeah. their thinking there. Yeah. Uh, so they did a whole bunch of that, but they but they actually also did a whole bunch of science, and and this is the this is the tricky thing to try and work through. Yeah. Um. So, uh, Carl Astle, he's the boss of this institution. Um. He funded a whole bunch of science into whether nicotine or other constitutes of tobacco smoke could be considered mutagens. Uh, he thought, you know, so for him, preventative racial hygiene translated into a research effort to determine whether nicotine was a mutagen. Uh, we can't change our genes, but at least we can safeguard them for future from future damage. Preventive racial hygiene. Yes, yes. What yeah. kind of a shower do you need? <laughs> Well, he, he, that's impressive. Yeah, that's it's more the lead undies. Sure. Oh, Christ, <laughs> that's a that's a phrase. Mm. <sighs> so, uh, yeah. so uh, there's a there's a bunch of research that he funded that didn't quite go very far. Really, um, I'm surprised. Well, no, well, look. Um, so, what did he uh, what did he fund? Uh, the racial theorist Gunther Just. Uh, <laughs> He was appointed to. He gave. Six, he got six thousand Reichsmarks uh, to explore the genetic and hormo- hormonal damage caused by nicotine. Okay, might be possible. Fair enough. Uh, yeah. Pharmacologist Gustav Kuschinski uh, received seventeen thousand Reichsmarks uh, to conduct a series of rat experiments to prove that smoking caused heritable genetic damage. Oh, heritable. Okay. Yeah. Well, look, it's for the time. It's it's pushing things out there, but yeah, they're, no, they're that's, giving it that's a go. Actually, let's ignore the Nazi part. Okay. Uh, Gabriel uh, Schulze and Kate uh, Dishner, in their jointly written uh, "Die," here, here can you do, can you do this one? Mm. "Die Zigaretten Rationer" and "Die Zigaretten." Uh, "Die Zigaretten." Die. Yeah. So they're combined into words. So oh, "Die, die Zigaretten Russian Rationer." 
the de- smoke the cigarette smokers, the female cigarette smokers. Oh, so, um, lady smokers. I probably lost the tone for female. No, women. to be fair, that's that is one of my niches. Yeah. So, so their 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 thesis was the lady smokers. Uh, they interviewed 165 women as part of their study of um, physical and psychological effects of nicotine withdrawal. Ooh. Um, and and they spoke to a whole bunch of women in prisons that were smoking. Um, oh, I bet they were. Even though smoking was forbidden, and you know, not a lot of ethics for it. Any of the research here? Ethics. Uh, <laughs> yeah. They're Nazis. <laughs> um, <laughs> How are you define yourselves? Not ethical. Yeah, well, the, yes, definitely. Yeah. Wir sind und, und like against. Did you get ethics? ethics? No. 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 Then you're in. No. Yeah. Then you're in. <laughs> Fine. Yeah. Uh, the dissertation records the women's cries for cigarettes and attempts to classify female smokers by menstrual patterns. Well, fair enough. Fair call. Constitution. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I thought there was going to be a response to that. There was. There was, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Constitutional type, whether asthenic, picnic, leptosome, and criminal behavior. I, I don't know what. So, asthenic picnic leptosome is a fungus. Well, where, which one were they? they no, that's a fungus. It's a Jewish fungus for, of women. <laughs> I don't quite know. Oh, and, no, I looked and, it up. Um, they, they said that smoking made one vulnerable to tuberculosis, which wasn't too far off the fact, and called for a total smoking ban for women, uh, which was consistent with the, the Nazi yeah. slogan, Der Deutsche Frau Rock nicht, the German woman does not Don't smoke, smoke yeah. does yeah. not smoke. Uh, they also did some other sociological studies where they're looking at how Jewish capital interests might have made people smoke, you know, if the if the Jews might be forcing people to smoke, some sort of thing. Of course they are. A lot of things. Um, I'm Jewish, you're not smoke, please. Uh, they also lent their expertise to um, the Buchenwald uh, concentration camp. Fuck um, yes. Uh, I'm not going into that story, but there is one weird story where Frederick Tim of of the Institute um, helped to autopsy a body of some um, mm. SS Hauptsonführer, so a camp guard, mm. who, had, who had suicided supposedly by ingesting a large quantity of su- cigarette butts. I, ingesting? Eating? Yes. Wow. Uh, uh, yeah, well, who hasn't done that? Well, but I, it's a nicotine poisoning. Basically. Yes, but I don't know why you necessarily needed the to, to eat them. Or, or needed to get the um, the tobacco uh, research group on board no. to help with that. There are quicker ways to kill yourself. I'm told it's not a good one. It's not a good one. But 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 the key work of, the key work of the institute was a paper by Eberhard uh, Schreier and Eric Schoniger uh, that's called Lungenkrebs and Tobacco Verbrauch. Yes, it, yes. Uh, well, who hasn't read that? Lung cancer and tobacco consumption. Yeah. And this they published this in 1943. So this is um, right in the middle of the Second World War. It's based on uh, Schoeniger's uh, PhD dissertation. Um, and now just remember, both of these were people who were totally down the Nazi party. And mm. uh, one of them had joined the as the doctor of the brown shirts. I don't know why the brown shirts need doctors. Well, because they were children. Yeah. And children need medical help. Probably, probably. Uh, the other one had had been well involved in the Nazi party all the way through. So they're very, very yeah. much down the Nazi. It's kind of interesting, is it? Like what was happening in America at that time? As nothing. Well, all nothing. Over. Women, women were just sort of like starting to smoke, and it was sophisticated. Mm-hmm. And you're getting onto that. I will come to America a tiny bit. To, to be fair, smoking is still sophisticated. This is my uh, biggest beef with it. It's so fucking cool. Uh, so what did they do? They sent out a questionnaire about smoking habits to a whole bunch of people. I think it was like 1,400 people all up. But yeah. a, ch- a chunk of them were uh, relatives of patients who'd been di- diagnosed with lung cancer in the last 10 years. Oh, yeah, no systematic bias there at all. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, okay. So we're getting some lung cancer people. Yeah. Uh, relatives of patients who had died from uh, cancer of other things, tongue, right. esophagus, yeah. stomach, rectum, prostate. Um, and then a bunch of normal men. Um <laughs> Age in a group. Okay, okay. Normal means a certain thing <laughs> in the Nazi regime, but they did. They did do. You know, they they wanted to get some people that had lung cancer, yeah. people that had other cancers, yeah. and then people who didn't have either. So they got a control group of some okay. sorts. Now we can we can criticize yeah. Nazi science all the way, but let's far be it for me to do that. Uh, indeed, indeed. Uh, so. Of that, you know, they nailed it down to, you know, 560 returned usable questionnaires. Okay. Uh, and This is pre-internet, right? Just to clarify. Well pre-internet. So that's pretty impressive. Yeah, it's very good. It's very good. Uh, well, they had the state backing them. 
and helping. Yeah, them can you imagine to- saying no? I'm not. No, I'm not filling out your questionnaire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, <the laughs> what sure. if? What oh. if we shot you? Yes. yes. Uh, okay, I'm rethinking. I want to know a few things. Just a few things. Fill yeah. this out. Or we shoot you. Maybe yeah. a little bit shooting. Have you considered answering that question differently? Yeah, but what, what is it? One to seven. I seven th- is the Jews' number, and one is you die. So I'll take six. D- 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 okay, okay, I would record that. Now. I'm neither dead nor Jewish. I'm safe. <laughs> I don't think they actually surveyed Jews, Jews. In, uh, in this one. Not, not, that not knowingly. Um, it's possible. It's possible. Look, I'm. I'm. These were bad people. Mm. And I will come to later. I've heard that about the Nazis. I will come to later. One of one of um, uh, so what is it, Carl? He, one of his other PhD students did some things that weren't went, weren't great. Well, uh, look, look, no, many of them did things that weren't great. <laughs> but but when you go and and when you try and disentangle, who was the not great of the not great? Oh, yeah. wow. and who's the worst of the nuns? And and, yeah. and there were certainly people in this group that went, oh, you know what? I want to do things that are really fucked. Can I can I do the really fucking Yeah, my, what I'm curious about is what if I just do sick shit? Yeah. So so there were people in there and yeah. not not Shire and Shonigan. Not, nothing I've seen in no, either these of these guys, two. No, these guys they were monsters. They were gentlemen. Uh well, I don't know that. Oh no, everyone says so. Well, look, look, the worst critique of this study it seems to be we're not quite sure how they got access to the databases to to send out the questionnaires. And of, if that's the worst thing, yeah, no. <laughs> of, of on, on, a, on a Nazi scale, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. They, How they did are, you get my phone number? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Of all the things they could do, when when the PhD student who is sitting up across the hall yeah. is literally removing um, skin from people's backs to record their tattoos while they're alive, uh, not necessarily. Oh, you have no imagination. But yes, so the PhD student across the hall is doing that, and they're just me. They're, I'm calling people unsolicited. <laughs> So don't worry too much. So I feel dreadful. So what did they find? They got they got whole, of the 560 eventual uh, questionnaires that are returnable, mm. and and they've got they've got about 93 male and 16 female, so just 110 so uh, lung cancer cases in there. Right. And so here's the here's the key thing that they found, and this is in 1943, is that lung cancer patients were far more likely to be moderate, heavy, or very heavy smokers. In fact. Amongst the 109 mm. lung cancer cases they found, only three were non-smokers. And that's it's way smaller than the control that's group. That's fuck all. And yeah. they had a yeah. control group. Yeah. They had a control group yeah. and they found you know, that uh, yeah. basically smoking correlates enormously mm. with lung cancer. Look, and, and in, in the world of epidemiology, Bradford Hill, a dude called Bradford in particular, they came up with a bunch of core... Um, criteria for deciding whether there may be some epidemiological connection with mm-hmm. this equals that. And correlation is not completely out. If the correlation is huge enough and it also relates to a bunch of other factors, like it's plausible, it relates to other research, blah, 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 blah. I know it's common to say correlation does not equal causation and it's true. But you can't dismiss it. Yeah, and, and you can't pretend that's not enough to say it doesn't. It's You've got to Absolutely. start with that, be sceptical, and then dig further. Well, so the the yeah. funny thing about all of the all of the story of, um, of smoking and lung cancer yeah. is that all the way along, correlational work has been underpinning everyone's idea here. Mm. You know, there's been other studies that have helped enormously, but correlational work has done so much heavy lifting. Look, epidemiology here. is full of grand scale correlations and it is often right. Now, thing is, thing is at the time, the science and the ideology lined up like little babies ducks. Yeah. Like they, yeah. they, they loved it. They loved yeah. it. So the Nazis, you know, they didn't like the white bread. They didn't like uh, asbestos, but they hated smoking. So Hitler, Hitler himself, he showed off that he said, I've, I quit smoking in 1919. Why don't you fucking quit? too uh he also he also said you know all of my buddies you know like Mussolini down there and oh, Franco yeah. over in Spain yeah we all quit smoking but look at Churchill Stalin and Roosevelt smokers little bitches they, they, they are slaves to big tobacco yeah um so what did that what do they do they had they had ads put out all over the place they banned tobacco in a bunch of places so the ads would say you know um, they've got Hitler up there saying, "Brother National Socialist, do you know that your Führer is against smoking and thinks that every German is responsible to the whole people for his deeds and omissions, and does not have the right to damage his body with drugs?" So there's there's ads out there with Hitler. It's amazing because you know you're just waiting for the Americans and the English should just be going, "Oh my God, Hitler's against it." So we're pro. <laughs> 
Yes. <laughs> yes. Also, uh, I, I refuse to be responsible for my emissions. Just carry on. Uh, uh, well, they banned um, they they banned smoking in theaters and cinemas, on buses, many public buildings. Hmm. Um, Astle, as I said before, he was the first to put. And a, this is the thirties. Yeah, or earlier thirties and into the forties. Yeah. Okay. So so yeah. they started doing some of this stuff in the thirties, and yeah. during during the war they kept it going. So in the forties. Yeah. So Astle um, was the first person to ban smoking on a university campus. Um, in Freak. his University of Jenner. How do you learn without a durry in your mouth and a beer in your hand? Well, particularly in the 40s. You know, what are you yeah. going to do? Uh, I smoke my gloire, otherwise I do not understand philosophy. Yeah, but that's in France. That's different. Same, same, same thing. Germany, they, France, same thing. I, I like They banned it in post offices, military hospitals, and all Nazi party offices. So, Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? But, but <laughs> you know what's funny? Even, even the Nazis had to fight big tobacco. So, <laughs> oh wow! So I, you know, you know, we're we're used to the idea that people have it's it's a hard fight against big tobacco yeah. uh, in this time. Um, so, and, and the big tobacco is like, hey, we took on the Nazis. Yeah, what you got, bitch? Well, mm, yeah. big, big tobacco didn't quite win. No, you know, no, no. I'm you know, saying they, they took them on, but they they, they did well. Um, so well, who's still around, Nazis or big tobacco? Hitler was sad that he gave tobacco. Yeah. He gave cigarettes to all his soldiers, um, and he was sad that yeah. they got a bit caught because. Eventually, tobacco taxes represented like a twelfth of all of the Nazi tax oh, regimes. Okay. Like right, yeah. the money they made on, t- like yeah, they made yeah. a lot of money. Yeah. Um, at the moment, we make, which is weird, we make a thirtieth of our government taxes are tobacco in Australia now. Thirtieth, really? A thirtieth. That much still? A thirtieth. Fuck so, that! That's so terrible. Australia's Australia's tobacco taxes is seventeen billion out of five hundred and five. That's the federal government. Uh, Ugh. Thirty a thirtieth. I don't know. I, I feel really conflicted about that. How in the shit is that okay? Like, it's, oh no, we make it more expensive because it stops people from doing it, except for all the people who keep doing it. Like, well, that's the problem. It, it does God. stop some people, but then there is doesn't there, stop a lot. And then there are the other people down at the at the most addicted end, and it just makes it harder and harder and ruins their lives. And so that's a really tough one. <sighs> it's also, I mean. Hitler angsted through this as well. Having, having one hundred percent. Hitler had these thoughts. The thoughts that you are having right now, Hitler had seventy eight years ago. No, they might be different because he's he's not married know. to the same woman as I am. Okay. And going through reading a book, a guy called Alan Carr, who has a great long form book about how to quit smoking. And one of the things, you know, the classic, it's it's sort of like a, a word meme, a text meme that says smoking's it's, tobacco's more addictive or nicotine's more addictive than heroin. I don't doubt it. The line I love is from this guy who went through. He was he was the kind of guy who I had a cigarette in his mouth. He would be putting a jumper on, and he would have the cigarette in his mouth. Put his head through the thing, hold the cigarette in his hand, put it back in his face. He hadn't even finished putting his top on, and he's still smoking. And he said, "Yeah, the, the problem with that argument is it has never woken anyone up. No one has woken up in the middle of the night going, I crave nicotine so badly I can't sleep anymore.' Sure, heroin's different. But so." It's, it's would, different. Seriously? Do you really think that people don't wake up in the middle of the night and think that? Yes. If No, that, that's because they've woken up for different reasons. They might have woken up and gone, fucking hell, I'm awake now. This is annoying. Now I may as well have but a cigarette. people sleep with like an ashtray by their bed and smoke. Yeah, but they don't, they don't get woken up because they're like, I can't sleep for more than two hours because I need nicotine. There's okay. no there's no evidence to support that. Well, see, I, I wonder how much how much Hitler was worried about that addiction as well. Like that's, mm. a, that's, that's an aspect that he would say. Because that would be a weakness. Yeah, it would be a weakness. It, absolutely. And Hitler yeah. had no weaknesses. That's on record. Uh, you, yes, except uh, for Ava. Uh, no, it was, it was when he got to like forty kilos on the on the guns, like on that, the old, that, on the old curls. Yeah, yeah, that's where that's where he hit to. <laughs> um, the, there was a there was a um, so they had to fight against big tobacco, and in fact, big yeah. tobacco made an institute, just like they've done in countries around the world, which was their their think tank sort of thing in cool Nazi enough. Germany. It was called uh, what's it called? Um, the Tobacologica Medicalanalis, which is a much more much more Latin way of saying what they were, they were in, and um, <laughs> they, were, they were closed down by the Nazi regime pretty quick. But big tobacco was big tobacco was fighting against, yeah. and and the industry yeah. found it really hard. So, in the end, where did this get to? Um, obviously, uh, big tobacco didn't win, and the Nazi Party didn't win. They were both crushed by you know 
The war. Well, arguably, the war. Nazis definitely. Big tobacco crushed yet? Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Yeah. Here's the thing. So the institute itself, so Carl Astell's, uh, Astell's uh, institute that was campaigning so hard against tobacco in Germany, uh, Astell himself uh, committed suicide. Um, oh, at, in 1945, when you know the tro- the Russian troops were coming in, he destroyed all his files, and uh, he suicided in the university med- medical clinic in April 1945. When it was pretty clear that all of his stuff would come in the to medical him. clinic. That's a safe way to do it. Um, he just to you know he had campaigned against tobacco, mm. but he had also helped to authorize the euthanasia operation of um, some 200,000 men- mental and physical disabled. Um, he'd helped out with the, um, the final solution of the Jewish question. Uh, he would have been tried as a war criminal, definitely. What makes you say that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think you're reaching. Now, the interesting question then is the work. The work that actually quite plausibly shows the association between uh, I know, right? Uh, the association with between smoking and cancer. Now, um, is, it, is it strong? <laughs> it's strong, <laughs> but it took a long time to come. So the um, the particular paper, the Schreier and, and Schoeniger paper, mm. uh, it was largely ignored all throughout mm. uh, all throughout the post war. Mm. So you know, I know you love citations, Rod. Uh, oh God! And H indices. The science citation index yeah. shows the paper was cited like three or four times in the sixties, once in the seventies, and not again until nineteen eighty eight. Uh, so okay, that's wild. It was so the first study that really shows. Look at this shit. That smoking leads to cancer was just ignored, and in fact, yeah. um, you know, there's yeah, a but no- it was Nazis and scientific I mean, experiments. Well, this so why would you go near it? Yeah, well, this yeah, is yeah, the yeah. thing. That's what so many people said. Yeah. They said, "Why would you go near it? It's bad." But, but maybe it wasn't bad. But it, yeah, I get. But I that, get- that's a tough call. Like, so they are definitely bad people. Full stop. No question. Mm. Did they ever do anything useful? And it's true. I mean, it's been long talked about that the Nazis, one thing they did do is say tobacco is shit. Mm. Mm. It's evil, wrong, and bad. And it, and and, it has and, been dismissed because had Nazis good, said and it. And they had decent science to show it. They yeah, had, they really they, did. They yeah, had yeah. decent yeah. science to show this. Yep. Um, so there's a bunch of other papers that really do. And, and they were just ignored. Uh, mm. So, you know, in fact, after – so there was a 1953 German – um, topic devoted to tobacco and cancer. So not long after the war, mm. didn't include the article at all. They're like, no, backing away from this stuff. Let's yeah, just. understandable. And in fact, you know, 1952, uh, the British epidemiologist Richard Richard Doll uh, brought out the evidence into uh, England, the UK, the US mm. um, that started to show this link. And so there started to be this Western link in the 1952s. Uh, in sorry, the 1950s. No, I like that. The 1952s. Yeah, they so were they were, they were heady years. But they 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 ignored all of this, all of the German stuff the whole time through, wow. because they said uh, maybe this would be because yeah. it's German. Yeah, exactly. Because it's Nazi. The interesting thing after the war. Um, the U.S., so 1948 and 1949, the U.S. shipped 93,000 tonnes of Blonde Virginia blend tobacco-free, uh, tobacco, free of charge, to Germany. Uh, 93 million? No, thousand tonnes, yeah. but tonnes. Like, this is... That's... Uh, and- that's criminal. So this is the US. Get, <laughs> so so this is the US saying get smoking tobacco again. Yeah. Um, as part of the Marshall Plan, they said, and here's a whole bunch of tobacco. It's you fuck, can just it's start smoking. Up. It. Yeah. Um, and so you know, you know that throughout all this period afterwards, uh, they've been playing this Nazi card. They're saying, mm. you know, if if you anti tobacco stuff is what the Nazi does, then you're a Nazi. So look, it's a tough. I'm one. against cancer, Nazi. It's a, it's a tough one. They ignore like this research was ignored for so long, and yes, it wasn't that long after. It was about ten yeah. years after that English and American scientists started to discover the link between tobacco and cancer. And then there's a huge fight, you know, and that's a, that's a whole topic that we should do one time. Yeah, the huge fight to get this out there. But the fact that the first first real push against tobacco was done in the I think Nazi you mean regime. Putsch. Putsch. We have a putsch against tobacco. Lung cancer deaths kept going up, kept going up until really? until 1990. They peaked in 1990 uh, in Western countries. Like mm. it, it took another 50 years before people would actually actually start stopping. Because we did the smart death. thing and we pushed it all onto third world countries or whatever we're calling them now. Developing worlds, global south. 
Sadly or happily, they are a long way away from our rate of lung cancer deaths to get. Mm-hmm. We can, with mm. that, whilst the tobacco companies are making profits and increasing their profits in the third world, uh, sorry, the developing world, uh, they're global, a, global south, the global south, all of those things, they're a long way from reaching lung cancer deaths of anywhere near our rate yet. Just because. How in the shit is it still possible? Anywhere, like I find that amazing. I, I, I'm not going to poo-poo someone's right to smoke or do whatever they want. Go ahead, have at it, do what you want to do. I, I, I thoroughly agree. We have the right to choose how our lives play out and then end. No beef. But the idea that you can, for the purposes of profit, still sell that shit. Yeah, and that's a different thing. Blows my mind. Sell it, market it. Market, it's market it. I also yeah. have doc- get doctors. Well, they used to have doctors do the ads. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, nine out of ten doctors smoke camels, unfiltered because yeah. delicious. Yeah, and and just dead this old. tobacco is roasted. So you feel that you know you should be allowed to have a tobacco plant on your deck, but maybe not uh, have a whole industry pushing tobacco to. I just find it confusing. I mean, I I do and I don't. Of course, I understand. My cynical brain, is, of course, is very strong, but I, yeah, I, it. It breaks me a little bit that you can do that still. Particular, I mean, in a country like ours, it's like we'll, we'll do. It. If you smoke right now, you're not paying attention, and I, and I do reject the addiction argument, not because it's not true, but because it depends on what your priorities are. Like what is addiction then? Well, it's a, that's a good question, man. Maybe we should do a topic on that. Um, or many. No, what I mean is, I'm not saying that there's no difficulty. I'm not claiming there's no difficulty, but I am. The argument that it's, oh, it, I'm a slave to it, I have no choice, I don't quite see. What is free will then? What, what God gives us. I should do a topic on that too. What God so many us. topics coming ah. up. But the, but the idea, like, like, of course it's addictive, of course, but, but a lot of the things addictive about tobacco are also the, the scenario, the habits. Like, I've finished reading this sure. thing, I'm going to have a durry. I've finished work, I'm going to have a durry. I get an excuse to leave my desk and go downstairs. I've masturbated in an MR, MRI machine, I'm going to have a durry. You're on the bus or the train, whatever it is, I'm going to do it. And, and I get that, but the idea that that, it, that is not the thing I'm, I'm arguing about. What The thing I'm arguing about is the ability of the companies who sell them to you to go, oh, no, it's cool, man. I think, I think the thing is that, yeah, the Nazis were at a time when... Tobacco companies, they were powerful then, but they, mm. they were trying to catch them at a time they weren't as powerful. Yeah. And, and, and that they, went well. No. And, <laughs> look, I know, they're terrible people, but maybe they were trying to catch... That, like, smoking rates increased so much yeah. after that. After that. And maybe there was a moment there where, where countries around How the world... How do you go to work? How do you go to work? Like, I, I've done some corporate jobs and weird things and communication stuff, and one time, right near the end of my tenure with a particular corporate training facility, Philip Morris were our clients and they turned up and and the boss of this company said look any of you having a have an objection to this because they sell tobacco is what they do just let us know and i was stand like stand up and flag yourselves yeah well just yeah exactly off you go you don't have show to, yourself yeah don't don't do this program and i was like oh i'm gonna do it because i want to see what these people are like yeah. and it turns out they're normal people of course they are but they there's a level of denial that is thick and rich this is 20 odd years ago but still like the idea that you can go to work and go oh no but it's just it's for my family because my kids need to eat or whatever, whatever the way you write it off, fuck off. You're and selling like the, even alcohol. You can have a bit of alcohol. I was just going to say though, but yeah. like you, you replace um, alcohol companies, like big, big yeah. multinational alcohol companies with tobacco in this conversation. But they're not quite they're not, the They're not same. quite the same. Why they're aren't not. they quite the same? Because tobacco's connection to cancer is far more direct Far more, direct. Uh, but this is an interesting thing, though. How do we how do we deal with a variety of addicti- cancer, addictive things? Yeah. Addictive things. Oh, cancer can get fucked. That yeah. give us some pleasure that have negative consequences, and some of them are more linear. Like like yeah, the, exactly. the, the 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 smoking to cancer is pretty linear. Drinking to cancer, mm, there's, Look, there, it does. Well, yeah, yeah. like if, if you're only but, using yeah. cancer as the or, measure, or, okay, or to or to or big, big negative consequences. Yeah, De- let's just go with deaths. You know, at one end, video games are in there, and TV is in there, and all of these yeah. things. Yeah. And how do we deal with them in society when when we need to have a real life where we, you can have some pleasures? Uh, we can, we can't no, just. That's true. It's true. And my biggest bias, obviously, like I I used to smoke a fair bit, but it wasn't tobacco. And I was always confused by people who'd smoke a lot of tobacco because I'm like, what, what are you getting out of it? Like Something. I get, you blow a J and like, <laughs> this is tops. You have a cigarette and you're like, well, you just breathed in some smoke. I never really understood the connection. 
alcohol similarly. Like I don't even get the bang for buck from tobacco. And I have been a tobacco smoker and or a peripheral tobacco smoker. I never understood the bang for buck. Also, it's not cultural. It's not like in many cultures that I can think of, if any, especially Western-related ones, where you go, well, it's a wedding. We're all going to have some cigarettes now. Let's all cigarette the bride. Like, it's there's Guaranteed a different there are, connection. Though. Yeah, but not many. Not many in mainstream larger cultures. I'm not saying they're irrelevant, but I'm saying they're not many. A toast is different. Fuck tobacco companies. Just, just Wholesome Show says, if you want to sponsor us, go lick your own dick. Yeah, no, not you. <laughs> Philip Morris, Sorry. Fuck off! Like, like we have we've been saying no so long to Philip Morris. Like, I it's can't hard. believe I can't believe it's how hard. many times they keep asking us. They Would say, you nagging, leave us begging. Alone. Like, they threw us like a billion dollar check. <laughs> they, 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 they slid it under the door. Why do they treat us this way? I don't know. They're the testing wholesome us. show is me, Will Grant, him, Rod Lamberts, joined today by CJ Josh Hello. of that other amazing podcast. G'day, Patriots! You should listen to it. It's full of patriots. <laughs> it is, it is. And it's kind of a G'day. timely time to listen to Isn't it. Isn't it though? I don't know. I don't know when this episode. Oh will god, go god out. knows. <laughs> no, it, be... it will still be relevant, trust me. <laughs> this episode is definitely coming to you either before or after the American election. See you soon, listener. <laughs>